let's check this out. Me and I went through this last time. So I want you to do it. I want you to kind of bite your tongue a little bit, buddy, because you've seen this already, okay? Okay. Now, if you look down here on line 638, you see what we got going on here? Yeah. Okay, so we got a shell script that's starting, right? Now, now I want you to look. So you can see that source code. What's going on with uh, 636 to 639? You're, you're trying to get it to run in root or doing it pseudo, and it doesn't look like it's actually running. All right, so if the effective user ID does not equal zero, then print out echo, please run as root. Oh. If the effective user ID does not equal zero, right? Because if you type ID, it's gonna be like, hey, your user ID is not zero, right? But if I go sudo bin dash, right? And um, okay, now if I ID, what's my user ID? Zero. Right, roots ID is zero. Now, if you run something with the sudo command in front of it, your effective user ID is zero. Does that make sense? You're, access, you're accessing root when you're doing it in sudo. Right, so your effective user ID, right? So this way a guy can run the script with sudo. Make yeah. sense? Okay. Right. Now, what do I got here? Check to see if what? User has access to the bin files. Right, so in user bin for binary, right? In Linux, we don't call it an EXE, we call it a binary. So okay. executable files in Linux are called binaries. So you have sbin, system binaries, and you have user bin, user binaries, right? So it's executables that can be managed by users, executables that are managed by the system. Make sense? Mm. So you have a user binary called what? GNU C compiler. Okay. So you got a user that can compile that particular file. Right, right. Well, it's not, uh, this is actually, is it present? So oh. variable is file one and it's user bin GCC. Is this file present? Yes. Okay. So if, right, this file is present, then echo what? Then echo file is installed. Right. Then run the clear command. If it's not, what? If it's not, then install it. Right, and then you see how it runs the app command. Now the app command can only be run if you're running as sudo or if you're already root. You notice I don't have the word sudo in front of it, do I? Right. Oh. But why? Because what? The effect of user ID is zero. Good. Right? So <laughs> what he does is he checks to make sure the script is running as who? Root. Or sudo. Good, or sudo, good. Then he checks to see if what file is present. If it's not install, if it's not present, what does it do? Then it installs it, okay? Now, what do I do? I cd to the temp directory, right? Mm -hmm. If some stuff was already there, what do I do? Delete network audit, delete what? I delete the customer audit. Okay. Then I'm going to make a directory called what? Network audit okay. what? Discovered services. Okay. Then I make a scan that looks for what? For Windows. Sun Microsystems remote procedure call. That's port 111. Oh, okay. That's where the old Linux stuff comes from. That's right. Run microsystems remote procedure call, that's port 111. So now I'm looking for SSH, that'll be port what? 22. Good. 
You see? And now I make directories for all of these. You see them? Right. Okay, after that, now I create another variable called what? Propecia. Okay, file two, which is Propecia. If the file is found, right, say what? Begin installing it. Right, he's going to CD to the temp directory. What does wget do? You're okay. You're okay. I'm still learning my Linux. <laughs> You're okay. You're doing great. Okay. Web get. It's going to pull a file down from the internet. And the file that it's pulling down is what? It's the Propecia in Sealed. Yeah. And it's C source code, isn't it? Right. Yeah. Then he turns around and he what? Compiles it. Now he compiles the code and then copies it into the bin directory. Now what's the first thing he does? 728 to 732. What is that? Okay, does this look familiar? I'm running Propecia for what port? Uh, Windows port. Good. And it's going to write it out to a file called what? Windows host. Okay. Then he's going to say, hey, I'm done. And now I'm going to do what? Done scanning for what? Windows host, what? On to the next next scan. Yeah. There you go. Now I'm going to run Papisha looking for what? FTP. Write that to a file called? FTP host. Because in that file, in that FTP host file, if I cat the file, will be a bunch of IP addresses of hosts that had port 21. Is this making sense? Yeah. yeah. Then I do what, guys? You go right down the line. You go for 22. Yeah. 110. Okay. And we do this because Propecia is so fast, isn't it? Right. Mm -hmm. Right. It's so fast. It's easier for me to just be like, sweep through these ports, put these ports here, right? Right. Now I go for 110. There you go. I go for 111. You seeing it, guys? Right. Okay. Now I keep on going, don't I? Okay. Now I'm looking for databases. 1433 is Microsoft SQL Server. 1521 is Oracle. You seeing it? Right. 5432 is Postgres. 27017 is MongoDB. 3306 is MySQL. You seeing them? Yep. When I'm done with all that, then what do you notice here? 4X in what? Concatenation. Yeah, so cat the Windows host and call it X. So every IP address in that file, it's going to say do nmap. You see it? Uh -huh. Don't ping. Don't ping. Only check for port what? 445. Four, port for Windows. Right, because these machines only are, are ones that it found had port what? 445 open. And then tell it to run all those in-map scripts against it. You see it? Uh, okay. That's going to be enumeration, processes, sessions, shares. You see in it? Right. Mm -hmm. Right. And do it against every single variable, which is an IP address, in the host. Right oh. to a file called scan in a folder called what? Windows. Windows. Windows, right. Right. And then in that folder will be files that the IP addresses are the names of the file. Starting to see what I'm doing? Right. Extra sharp. Yep. Very cool. Then I turn around and I do the same thing for FTP. You see it? Right. Then I do the same thing for SSH. Then I do the same thing for 111. So all those security checks that I would run for every single port, you, you see what you're doing? Yeah, this is perfect. Yeah. 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 So so he got on site and it's his first job and he's new to networking and they gave the guy a network plus book and said, Well, you need to learn networking. Yeah, you feel like taking these people, putting them in a foreign country and give them a give them a dictionary and say, Here, survive. Yeah, with a language book. book is saying, well, you need more Linux. I was like, I haven't even gotten onto your system yet, though. But it drives home the need for a process. You're kind of seeing why I'm going through all this with you guys today, because, you, you know, 
you need to document every single step that you do and make a step-by-step -step guide for the next new guy. You, you kind of see what I mean? You should have that. So to me, it's like people need to see like, this is how I do it. You know, oh, right. now, you're going to modify this. You, you, you know what I mean? You're going right. to come up with your own way of doing it, you know, and there's, that's to be expected. Quite frankly, that's what I hope for, you know? Right. But at a minimum, you want to make a repeatable process so that when a new consultant comes in under you, you can just send him to Wisconsin, send him to Texas to go do his engagement, right? He should be able to follow the process. And then if he has a question, now you can ask him, where are you in the process? You, you see in that? Yeah. Instead right. of Digitype InMap with right. the capital P and the Q and the, you, you know, what I mean? hey, what's your process here? Like, I know every every shop has their own little process, which is fine, but you know, if you don't know anything about the network, you're gonna. It's common to ask what the IP is, so you know where to get to it. And I didn't. Even, um, I get looked at like I'm crazy. So, yeah. Yeah, and that's the whole reason why I've gone through this. So I'm gonna wrap up here, guys. Was this helpful, yeah, guys? Did this kind of help no, you? No, this is extremely, extremely helpful. This part of it was a good yeah. start. You could start. All right, all right. So now that you guys are on the same path, I'm gonna keep working with you individually. But every once in a while, I'm gonna make you guys form up like Voltron, you know, and kind of jump in the wow. together, kind of thing. But it'll be fine. Yeah, I have no problem.